Hi guys, welcome to the Fool Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. This week, or this week, we're playing Indiana. Saturday, 4 o'clock, FS1, if you didn't know the channel. So, I was looking at this game, and, you know, people have been saying, don't let it be a trap game, don't let it be a trap game. <laughs> Honestly, if people have been talking about it for that long. Is it still going to be a trap game? I don't think so. We have good coaches. I think we got some good leadership, especially Winovich and Gary. Good juniors. You know, you Hill. Hopefully he'll be back, Levert Hill. And hopefully our coaches and our senior leadership will not let that happen. Because there is a little bit to this. Indiana, don't sleep on them. 2015, Michigan won 48-41 to in double overtime. 2016, this was the game before Ohio State back then as well. Michigan won 20 to 10. If you remember, they were doing the Snow Angels after that game. 20 to 10, two-score game. And last year, Michigan won 20 to 27 to 20 in overtime. So each of these games has not been a blowout. None of them have been a blowout under the Jim Harbaugh era. So don't expect Indiana to be just a pushover. But I think Michigan's more focused this year. It's also a kind of a trap game because, yeah, of course, it's right before Ohio State. But if you look at the track record, the only game Michigan lost before the Ohio State game was last year at number five, Wisconsin. So I don't really know if you're counting that a trap game and you got to go on the road and play a top five team. But I don't think this is going to be a trap game. I think we're going to be focused for it. I really do. I hope so. Now, breaking down Indiana, Ramsey, their quarterback, pretty good stats. 2,300 yards passing. 17 touchdowns, 11 picks. Honestly, if your quarterback's kind of normal, that's probably pretty standard. We have Shea Patterson. He only has thrown three picks. That's why he's you know, on these nominations for best quarterback of the year. Only three picks for Patterson. So uh, Ramsey's pretty good. 67% completion percentage as well. So, I mean, Ramsey's pretty good. He also is a quarterback that's going to hold the ball. On the year, he's had 97 carries. 97 carries. Not a ton of yards because obviously I couldn't find the sack adjusted yardage. But he will hold the ball, so it's going to be some zone read plays, just like we see with Patterson and Higdon a lot. So we got to be watching for that. But their running back, Scott, he has 178 carries for 894 yards. And oh, I'm looking, eight touchdowns. Eight touchdowns for him. So they like to run the ball pretty good, too. They're a pretty balanced offense, honestly. They average 411 total yards, 255 passing, 155 rushing. Okay? So they're relatively, eh, it's not as balanced as Michigan is, so they're more pass-heavy, I guess. And if you're looking at the pass, you really got to stop a tr three big-time receivers. Hale, six touchdowns. Westbrook, three touchdowns. And Freifogel. If that's his name, I'm oh, I'm saying it right. Sorry, Fry Fogel, if that's not right. He has two touchdowns. And all of them average over 12 yards per catch. So, Indiana is a pretty good offense. But they're not a very good defense. On average, they give up 232 passing and 181 rushing. So, if we're looking at it, I would expect Michigan to be able to run the ball pretty well. And Shea Patterson this week is not probably going to be handing the ball off every time. I think they'll let him do a few more of those zone reads or whatever where the quarterback can hold on to it or let it go. And he's been deadly with that this year. I can't wait to see him do that against Ohio State. So again, they might limit him, like say only a couple, right? Especially early in the game. Maybe we can just run on them. But again, if you don't have to be accountable to the quarterback, that means the de defensive end can just crash down the linebackers don't have to worry about you. All of a sudden, you got that extra defender or two just in the box. If Patterson is showing he's going to run, that means you got to have someone accountable for him. And that takes that person out of the defensive play every play. And that means there's one less person to block, at least one less. So, I mean, that's a big thing. I think that's why Michigan didn't really run the ball that great against Rutgers. We were just not interested in having Patterson run. It's like, no. And, of course, we won 42-7. to We didn't have our quarterback hit, and we didn't need him hit. So, no reason to run Patterson last week. This week, I think they'll have him run a few times. I also hope they'll get Tariq Black a few receptions. Even if he just does a quick hitch, just throw out to him. If he's got, like, a little gap, 
right? Or do a wide receiver screen to him, something like that. Uh, fan base, <coughs> sorry, it's wondering if they're like kind of holding Black back to try to keep him off uh, video footage so Ohio State can't really scout him. You know, he's only played a couple games. That was last year. So there might be something to that. I don't know. So I hope we get Black, though, into the game a little bit more. He was kind of, uh, if you saw it on Twitter, he was uh, kind of thumbing up or liking everyone who was saying we need to get Black the ball more. So people are wondering if he's a little, you know, wanting the ball, if he's frustrated. And he probably could be frustrated. He's missed two years of football, basically, because of injuries. And he's back. He wants to be part of the game. So, of course, who wouldn't be frustrated, right? But hopefully, get him the ball, and hopefully that goes away. No frustration, I hope. Defensive-wise, I think Michigan will be all right with our secondary. They've been playing pretty lights out. I'd expect them to do a good job. Overall, I do expect a few kind of big plays in this passing attack against us. So I'm going to pick 38-17, to a Michigan victory. 38-17 is my official pick for Indiana game. What are you looking for in this game? Should the Wolverines not play black or limit him? Should they really try to get him involved? How long do you play Patterson if, you know, we can rest him? Are you letting him play till we get up three scores, like 21 points, and then pull him out? Or is it four scores? Hopefully we get to rest him and our other important players. Hey, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you have any ideas, comments, let me know. Appreciate it. Uh, I also appreciate the subscribers. I'm getting a good amount of them. I really do like that a lot. Thank you very much. As always, go blue!